Even if you know absolutely nothing about the Pokemon series, you know who this guy is. Ash Ketchum is arguably one of the most iconic video game characters, despite never even appearing in a single mainline Pokemon game. But let's be honest, without his trusty partner Pikachu, Ash is near useless. Except for that one time he tried to throw hands with Mewtwo. I don't know why he thought this was a good idea. But moving on, Ash is known for the Pokemon on his team more than anything else. And the same goes for countless trainers in the Pokemon series. Cynthia has her Garchomp, Leon has his Charizard, and Steven has his shiny Metagross. And if you take a look at their full teams, each Pokemon does a pretty good job in representing their trainer as a character. But that got me wondering, what if a regular Nintendo character stumbled into the Pokemon universe and became a trainer? What would their team look like? Let's take Luigi for example. Upon stumbling into the Pokemon world, his ghostly dog Pulterpup will be turned into a Pokemon, making Houndstone his ace. Given the fact that Luigi is Nintendo's top Ghostbuster, I think the rest of his team should be tailored to hunt down and catch ghosts. Obstagoon would be a great second Pokemon considering his normal type makes him immune to ghost type Pokemon. And for the same reason, I'd give him Hisui and Zoark. And I'm also going to give him Umbreon, Cacturn, and Mimikyu, since they'd all do well hunting ghosts. But let's move on to his more confident and popular brother, Mario. Since Mario's whole thing is being number one, I'm going to give him a team of the most popular Pokemon to ever exist. That means, I'm sorry Ash, but Mario's going to have to steal your ace for a little while. Alongside Pikachu, a fitting team for Mario would be Charizard, Lucario, Greninja, Dragonite, and Gengar. Yes, I know, Ash had all these Pokemon before, but there's a reason they're so popular. Moving away from the Mario series, what Pokemon would the Hero of Hyrule have by his side? Since Link's whole thing is using a sword and shield, it only makes sense that his ace Pokemon is Aegislash. On that same topic of swords and shields, I'm also going to give him Zacian and Zamazenta. I don't care how busted it is, none of this is real. As we all know, Link needs his trusty horse Epona by his side, so he welcomes Rapidash onto his team with open arms. And for his last two Pokemon, I'm going to give him Pokemon that tend to be more heroic. Gallade and Ambrose are both signals of hope and would fit very well on Link's team. But hope can only get you so far. Everyone needs a little bit of wisdom in their life. Zelda being the Triforce of Wisdom should only have the most wise Pokemon on her team, with her ace being none other than Gardevoir. Alakazam, Slowking, and Uxie are all known to be some of the smartest and wisest Pokemon out there. Lapras is a very elegant Pokemon and I think would be a very great fit on Zelda's team. And for her final Pokemon, I'm going to give her Greninja, referencing her alter ego, Sheik. But let's talk about Nintendo's other best girl, Samus. Since she's mostly seen in her super suit, her team will be full of Pokemon that are mostly armored up, with her ace Pokemon being Caesar. Cause just look at him, this design screams Samus. I'm also going to give her the luxury of having the two new armored up and totally badass Pokemon, Armor Rouge and Seraledge. Genesect is another one of those coded up Pokemon, and we can't leave out the original armored Pokemon. Aggron will serve as her beefed up and heavy hitting Pokemon. And for her last party member, I'm going to give her Pikachu, for the sole fact that they were best friends back in Subspace Emissary. Speaking of Smash Bros storylines, let's talk about the sole survivor of the World of Light Massacre. Kirby as a Pokemon trainer is straight up comedic, and his partner in crime would be none other than his Pokemon counterpart Jigglypuff. These two have been together since the early days of the Nintendo 64, but if you know anything about Kirby lore, you'll know that he's canonically the strongest character in all of Nintendo. So his remaining 5 Pokemon will be none other than the strongest Pokemon to ever exist. Starting off with Arceus, which is literally god in the Pokemon universe, and I'm also going to give him the creation trio being Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, who created space, time, and a whole other dimension respectively. And to top it off, I'm going to give him Ultra Necrozma, which is basically this alien divine being. Yeah, Kirby can handle it. On the polar opposite side of the power scaling spectrum, we have this tiny little space ranger. Almar is canonically 2 inches, which isn't, isn't small, it's just average, right? But since he's so small, his team should be made up of some of the smallest Pokemon out there, and preferably grass types since these are the things he has to work with. I'm going to be generous here and make Olimar's ace Kartana, since the rest of his team is pretty lackluster. Flabebe, Cutifly, Comfey, Joltik, Cosmoam are all 4 inches, which is still bigger than Olimar, but that's the smallest you're going to get in the Pokemon world. As you all know, I'm a big fan of the Pikmin series, so I'm going to give their newest character the spotlight. Ochi is a dog, so that's why I'm going to give him a team full of dog-like Pokemon. Ochi's bestest boy and number one loyal companion would be Stoutland, the closest thing you get to a dog in the Pokemon world. I was actually surprised to see how many dog-like Pokemon there are, but I narrowed it down to these five. Arcanine, Granbull, Houndoom, Lycanroc, and Boltound. Look at these furry little fellas. What a group of good boys. Speaking of furries, I'm sorry I have to do this, but Fox. He's the closest thing you'd get to a furry, so unfortunately, his team's going to be made of the most popular Pokemon fursonas. Starting off with Vaporeon. If you don't know why I'm putting Vaporeon here, you're a lucky human being. And if you do, I'm sorry. 
The rest of his team will be made up of Lopany, Incineroar, Lucario, Zeraora, and Brakeson. If you're a genuine Star Fox fan, I really am sorry. But if you're a furry, I'll never forgive you for making me hate some of my favorite Pokemon. But let's talk about another character the furries got to. Isabel. Since she's the sweet, humble mayor of your village, Isabel should have a group of cute, cuddly Pokemon by her side. That's why her front runner would be Guzzlord. Isn't he adorable? I'm also going to give her the personification of evil, Evaltal, the ruler of the distortion world, Giratina, the harbinger of doom, Eternatus, and the living nightmare, Darkrai. But Isabel's team wouldn't be complete without her last Pokemon, Togepi. I think this is a very fitting team for an innocent and cute creature such as Isabel. I know he's not really a Nintendo character, but he's appeared in so many Nintendo games he might as well be one by now. Sonic is known as the fastest character in all of gaming, and I know this is kind of basic, but Sonic's team is going to be comprised of the Pokemon with the highest speed stats. With a whopping speed stat of 200, his ace will be Regieleki, followed by Deoxys speed form, Ninjask, Feramosa, Electrode, and Excelgore. I know there's some situations where certain Pokemon can be faster when holding a certain item or something, but I think this is a pretty solid team for Sonic. I didn't want to give him the Knuckles, Tails, Amy treatment because I don't think that's really doing him justice. On the topic of non-Nintendo characters that fundamentally ruin Smash Ultimate, I'm going to talk about Minecraft Steve. Being made up of nothing but a bunch of cubes, I'm going to give Steve a group of blocky Pokemon, with this main Pokemon being Garganackle. I don't know why, but whenever I look at this thing, I get Iron Golem vibes. Another blocky Pokemon is Stakataka, which literally looks like something I made in creative mode as a kid. Some other cubed up Pokemon are Ice Skewl, Crustle, and Chargebug. And for his last Pokemon, I'm going to give him Porygon, since he's completely built up of rough edges. Heading back into the Nintendo universe, let's talk about the man who started it all. Donkey Kong's team will reflect his most defining aspect, Monkey. And given his love for playing the bongos, Donkey Kong chose Relaboom as his partner in crime. Infernape, Annihilate, Oranguru, and Slacking will all be great additions to his team, and his final Pokemon will be a small and playful chimp, Apom, referencing his best friend Diddy Kong. I believe Donkey Kong will build the most genuine connection with his fellow apes, and you gotta admit, this is a pretty sick team. Another one of those pseudo Mario characters is Yoshi, and given the fact that he's a dinosaur dragon type of thing, I think it's only fair that his team is made up of reptilian-like Pokemon, with his ace being Walking Weight. Yoshi would also be accompanied with Pokemon like Drudigan, Tyrantrum, Aerodactyl, Sceptile, and Rampardos. And I already know what you're going to say, Yoshi's a lot more in depth than just being a dragon, but to me he's really just a green dinosaur. And for our last team, this wouldn't be a Pokemon video if we didn't mention Pikachu. And you're probably wondering, how could Pikachu be a Pokemon trainer if he himself is a Pokemon? And I don't completely know, but in Smash Bros he can pick up and throw a Pokeball, so I'm just going to go with it. But Pikachu would only have one Pokemon on his team. I present to you, his partner in crime, Ash. Yep, that's right. This is Pikachu's entire team, and it's not even a Pokemon. So if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more of this, please let me know in the comments which characters you'd want to see me turn into Pokemon trainers. And also, if you want, tell me what your ideal Pokemon team would be in the comments. Here's mine. It's literally just my favorite Pokemon, but I look forward to reading yours. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the video.